Okay, so this problem asks us to find the work done by F along the curve C, where C is here an oriented piecewise regular curve uh, in two parts. We have C is going to be equal to C1 plus C2. Um, so before we start anything, to find the work done by F along C, we should first note that we need the general form of the line integral here to find the work done. So the line integral is going to be the integral of F of R of T, where R of T is going to be our parameterization of f dotted with r prime of t, uh, dt. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do this piece by piece. So we'll first lay out what we're going to do for c1, and then we're going to do, a world, we'll lay out what we're going to do for c2, and find the parameterization for both, just because we know that we need r of t and r prime of t, which we'll find later on. Okay, so the book says here that c1 so it says C1 is a portion of the parabola where y equals x squared and z is equal to 0 from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 0. Okay, so we have something going from 0, 0. Um, yep, 0, 0, 0 to 1, uh, 1, 0. And we know that it's a portion of the parabola where y is equal to x squared. y is equal to x squared uh, and z is equal to 0. Okay, so that's going to be our first, that's going to be our first um, curve here. We have C1. So then C2, it says C2 is the line segment from 1, 1, 0 to 2, 3, 4. So as you can see, we have kind of a curve here, so it goes up and then kind of out here. It's because this is just a line segment and this is a portion of a parabola. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and parameterize the first curve. So we're going to do C1 plus C2. So an easy way to parameterize the first curve is going to be to just let uh, x equal t. So if over here we let x equal t, then we're also going to let uh, y, because y is x squared, so y is just going to be equal to t squared. So we know then here that um, c1, which is going to be equal to, or c1 here, where we have the parameterization r1 of t, and this is just going to be x, y, and z. So we're going to have t, t squared, and then we know that z is equal to 0. So t, t squared, and 0. So we need to find the bounds of integration. Um, so how we're going to do that is we're going to try just plugging in the values of t and seeing what will give us the correct points. So this one will turn out to be pretty simple. So if we just plug in 0 for t, so we have 0, 0, 0, which seems good for the first because we're starting over here at 0, 0, 0. And if we plug in t equals 1, we have 1, 1, 0, which coincidentally is our second point. So it looks good. So we're going to vary t from 0 to 1 for our first integral here. So because this is r1 of t, we also know that over here from our line integral formula, we need r prime of t. So I'm going to go ahead and find that now. So r1 prime of t, so we're going to differentiate this here with respect to t. So the derivative of t with respect to t is just 1. The derivative of t squared with respect to t is 2t. And the derivative of 0 with respect to t is just 0. OK, great. So now we need to find f of r of t. So f of r of t. OK, so we go back to our original function here, all the way back at the beginning. We have f of x, y, z is equal to 1, negative z, and y. So we need to plug in uh, r of t here. So we need to plug in our parameterization r of t in. So we'll plug in, for anywhere we see an x component, we'll plug in t. Anywhere we see a y, we'll, see a t, we'll plug in a t squared. And in anywhere we see a z, we'll plug in 0. So up here we have 1. So the first component is just going to be equal to 1, because it's not dependent on any variable. Second component, negative z. So we have here negative z, so that's just going to be 0. And finally, y. So here, y is just t squared, so we'll plug in t squared there. OK, so now for our integral, we're going to need to first find the dot product of the integrand. So we have f of r, uh, this should be r1 of t, but I think it's clear, f of r1 of t dotted with r1 prime of t. OK, so we take the dot product of this vector here with this here. So we have 1 times 1 is just going to be 1. 0 times 2t is going to be 0 t squared times 0 is going to be 0. So this is just, just going to be equal to 1. So here I'll write integral of c1. So this is going to be c1 here. 
So our bounds of integration, we're just letting t vary from 0 to 1. So we'll let our bounds of integration be 0 and 1. And we determine that, that, that the dot product of f of r of t dotted with r prime of t is just equal to 1. So we're just integrating dt here, which is just equal to t evaluated from 0 to 1, which, which is just equal to 1. So that's going to be c1. So now we're going to go ahead and do c2. <coughs> Same procedure for c2, except it's going to be a little bit easier, in fact, to uh, parameterize c2. Okay, so to parameterize c2, we're going to find r2, r2 of t. So, okay, now we're starting in on, on uh, c2. So this is just a line segment. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the first. We're going to subtract the start from the end, and then um, we're going to add that on. So, so 2, 3, 4. So, okay, 2, 3, 4 minus 1, 1, 0 is going to be 2 minus 1 is 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. And 4 minus 0 is going to be 0. So our parameterization is simply going to be the beginning, the, the starting point. 1, 1, 0 plus t times the difference here. So t times 1, 2, 0. So we can simplify this out. So 1, the first component is going to be 1 plus t times 1, which is just 1t. So 1 plus t. Second component is going to be 1 plus t times 2, which is 2t. And the final component, which is 0 plus 0 times t, which is just going to be um, 0. Uh, this should be, excuse me, 4 times 0, this should be 4 here. Okay, yeah. Great. So 0 plus t times 4, which is 4t. Now 1 plus 2t, and then here we have 4t. Okay, great. So we have our parameterization for c2, so we have r2 of t. So now we need to find r2 prime of t. So we're going to differentiate r2 of t with respect to t. So r2 prime of t, the derivative of the first component with respect to t is just going to be 1. The derivative of the second component is going to be 2. And finally, the derivative of the final component is just going to be 4. OK, so we have r2 prime of t. So now why don't we find r of uh, f of r2 of t? So f of r2 of t. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go back to our original f, uh, f of x, y, and z here. And everywhere we see an x, we'll plug in um, everywhere we see an x. We're going to plug in a 1 plus t. Everywhere we see a y, we'll plug in 1 plus 2t. And everywhere we see a z, we'll plug in 4t. So for the first component here, it's just going to stay 1. The second component, we have negative z. So negative z here is going to be negative 4t. And finally, y is going to be 1 plus 2t. OK, so now we need to take the dot product of f of r2 of t and r2 prime of t. So we're going to do component-wise multiplication here and then add them together. So 1 times 1, cell right here, um, f of r2 of t dotted with r2 prime of t is equal to, so the first component's 1, and then negative 4t times 2 is going to be negative 8, negative 8t, excuse me. So 1 minus 8t. And finally, uh, 1 plus 2t times 4 is going to be 4 plus 8t. So as you can see here, we have a negative 8t and a positive 8t here. They cancel out, and we have 1 plus 4, which is 5. So finally, our integral, so our line integral of c2 is going to be the integral. So we should determine our bounds of integration now. So the bounds of integration, so we're going to go back to our parameterization here. OK, we're going to try plugging in points, just like we did for, our, for c1. So if we plug in t is equal to 0, we get 1, 1, 0. So that's looking good. We have our first point here, which is 1, 1, 0. So now we can plug in t equals 1, just to try that out. So when t equals 1, we get 2, 3, 4. So our bounds of integration are good. So we're going to let t vary between 0 and 1, just like we did for c1. So our bounds of integration are the same. 
0 and 1. And our integrand is going to be 5. 5 dt, so this is going to be equal to 5t, evaluated from 0 to 1, which is just going to be equal to 5. So finally, we know that our line integral c, or the, in order to find the work done, c, c is equal to c1 plus c2. So in the end, we get c is going to be equal to c1 plus c2. So c is equal to 1 plus 5, which equals 6. And we need some units on this. And we know that um, we're going to have work. The work is done in newtons, and then the distance in meters. So our units are going to be joules. So our answer here, finally, is we have uh, six joules.